Now, uh, we understand that the, the rain this morning and up until now is caused some havoc in town. We'll have the very latest for you pretty shortly when I wrap up this discussion with Mr. Adam Senenu. Mr. Adam Senenu, so, I mean, you also took advantage of this news conference today to react to the development around the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Now, some will say that what is happening is lawful and finds expression in the Constitution. So why the commentary around it? Well, yes, we are actually agree that uh, citizens have rights to petition, and so Mr. Amidu does have the right to petition. That's fine. We also believe the president did the right thing. He had to avoid it. We only say he should make sure all past present and future petitions should also be equally speedily mm -hmm. transferred. Some should not be kept. Uh, let the transmission be smooth, just like this one has gone. Are, are, are there some that you have in mind? Uh, no, no comment on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Chief Justice, <clears throat> we're expecting that <clears throat> we take on board whatever feedback. But clearly, Mr. Amidu had been raising these issues in the media for some time. And when he did, generally civil society, we've not agreed with his mm -hmm. positions. Um, and if I speak on this one, I'll speak personally. I, I find some of the allegations just out of this outlandish. I don't see how he was expecting the special prosecutor to give him the names of staff, their salaries on a pen drive. Who does that? Which kind of security agency will be doing that? So in general, we have reservations about the allegations, but we don't want to get into that space. Uh, let the Chief Justice look at the issues uh, and then respond to them. In general, we think that the OSP needs a lot of support. We, we think that because of the kind of cases they've picked, uh, we have corruption fighting back. And all of these things are intentional efforts to try and undermine the progress they've made. Uh, we call on Ghanaians to give the Office of the Special Prosecutor more support uh, and also hold them accountable when we have to hold them accountable. But, I mean, th this is a matter that, according to Mr. Amidu, uh, are things that, you know, provides enough grounds for the removal of the special prosecutor. Claims of encroachment of authority, uh, inducement of staff from sister law enforcement agents and giving them higher salaries, abuse of citizens' right to arrest and detention, which some lawyers say that it is a matter of opinion. And then abuse of the judiciary, procurement breaches, refusal to comply with the RTR request. When this matter broke and I spoke to you, you were clear that appears, Mr. Martin Amidu, I mean, has issues with whoever is occupying the office now. And that probably is the motivation behind this countless articles about Kisie Jabim. In fact, the last time I checked, they had written 19. Now, he wrote another one yesterday, making it 20. The one he wrote yesterday was the fact that Kisie Jabim should not be praised for whatever he's done to, uh, you know, to, to, to deal with ghost names that, are, that resulted in the loss of over 34 million uh, Ghana says because he himself has employed people and paid them without going through the constitutional requirements. I, I, Mr. Amidu, I think, in fact, looking at each one of them, when we get down to the nitty gritty, the foundations of the evidence and the issues don't hold water, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, right from the issue of uh, uh, staff, where if you looked at the law, uh, the, I think it's section 16.3. Says that the board shall advise the special prosecutor on recruitment and selection of, of senior staff and secretary. Right. Uh, in, I think, uh, in a, sep a separate section, uh, section 16 or so, it then talks about how other staff will be selected and talks about the president may delegate his, resp his responsibilities to the board for the appointment of other staff. The, the, the law backing the special prosecutor is such that. On reflection, there's nothing that has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to understand uh, if Mr. Amidu is looking at the section on other staff. He cannot be claiming what he's saying. Uh, if he talks about the procurement issue of cars, mm -hmm. the office went through the public procurement. He made an application to public procurement authority. Public procurement authority says that, look, as far as we are concerned, this thing was done by the SP. We've given approval. Then he writes saying that there's a problem. He doesn't attach any evidence. You know, each one of them, when we go into the merits of them, there's a difficulty. Mm. So it's up to the Chief Justice to decide. But strictly speaking, I mean, at this point, I can now see why we had some difficulty with him. He clearly had a certain understanding of interpretation of, of the law, mm -hmm. which was why we're not seeing the progress. Now you have a new person 
whose interpretation is more progressive, is more purposeful, and what you are doing is a different of opinion on interpretation. And you think that on that basis, the person should be impeached. That's not the case. If at all, the interpretation of the law needs to go to a court, mm -hmm. and the court needs to rule that, okay, in your thinking this way, you are wrong. Then we can say that Mr. Kesi Ajabeng is the one who is interpreting wrongly. And so it was it's more like he has put the cat before the horse. Mm. You can't just start asking for impeach, impeachment when somebody is interpreting it the way they believe it should be. Nobody else has made a ruling on it. There's no precedent. And then you say the person is doing the wrong thing. I have great difficulty with all of those. Well, what about the supposed attack on the judiciary, which also provide grounds for? I, I mean, it was very funny. Uh, the man spoke out of his heart that, look, there are cases and rulings that I think that uh, the way you handled it was not in the best interest because of what we are supposed to do mm -hmm. as a specialized anti-corruption and whatnot. The Chief Justice sees reason to say, yes, let's sit down and talk about this. And then somebody else, the, 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 the judges themselves haven't come over and say that we felt, what was the word he used? And yet somebody else is saying he did what? I don't get it. Honestly, don't forget that the Office of the Special Prosecutor is a pioneering institution. Right. They are charting a path that no other institution has charted so far. So there are areas where they will have to now, you know, push the boundaries and begin to set in place what will work. Right. In my view, we actually need a fast-track anti-corruption system where the judicial system and our prosecution investigators can work together, where they understand what is going on in the space. Because many other, look, I was talking about uh, Zambia. Mm -hmm. uh, when they came for the Commonwealth thing, the Zambian Director General of Anti-Corruption was saying that, Oh, they have a law in place now that says that no case should go beyond six months. And it's producing results. Corruption case. Yes. In Zambia. You see, those are the kind of things you need, where there are timelines, there are dedicated courts. Then the number of cases that are coming to conclusion, mm -hmm. the number of people who are being sanctioned, and the public you know, awareness that, ah, you can't get away with this, mm -hmm. will slow down the level of impunity. Mm -hmm. I think that he did us a, say, a favor by saying that, look, there are issues. We are in a specialized area. We need to work together with the judiciary to get good results. We are, having, we are being frustrated because it doesn't look like people understand what we have been set up mm -hmm. to do. You need to work with me. I don't see where the insult we, we, is. We're waiting for Mr. Kisei Jabin to respond, and then whether the, the chief justice will establish that there's a case for him to answer. Mm -hmm. If we move to that stage, you know, the constitution is quite clear on the composition of the membership to hear him. And the membership should, be, should include somebody with the rank of a, of a, of a superior, superior court judge. One of the charges against him is that he's denigrated the same institution that will be investigating him. Uh, do, do you expect fairness as we move Actually, on? I'm not expecting, I mean, I don't want to, mm. I don't necessarily want to, but I'm not expecting that at the end of the day, it's a prima facie case. Mm. I, I, I honestly, when I look at the issues he's raised, they, they, none of them really hold water, as far as I'm concerned, based on what he has attached, you know. Uh, I'll find it very strange for them to say that uh, he's denigrated his office or the, the judiciary by saying that, look, in specific instances. And it wasn't that he just spoke uh, in a vacuum. Mm. He was very, very deliberate and intentional in raising the issues and giving the examples. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that was a way of trying to say, look, can we look at this particular case and the ruling and see, does it actually serve? Isn't it, we are the ones who are supposed to be doing investigation. Right. But if the courts are now interfering and saying what we should even investigate or not, doesn't that infringe on our rights, mm -hmm. on our mandate? Whilst the court is supposed to wait, we finish our investigation, come to you, and then you adjud adjudicate that. The logic is clear. But are you, uh, how will you rate the performance of that office so far? Some say that, I mean, some have been questioning the relevance of it in the first place because perhaps they are not seeing prosecutions and, you know, people being arrested here and there, the recoveries and all those issues. And they say that, why don't we even dispense of it? I don't think that they really understand uh, the, the terrain. I, from where I sit, I, the last time I was asked this question about two weeks ago, I said, I'll give them a seven out of 10. The reason is simple. This institution was created out of nothing. Mm. Created in 2018. Probably had just about 15 staff to the last quarter of 2023. Mm -hmm. 15 people, with all the cases that they handled. In our terrain, we say prevention is actually much more important than prosecution. Yes. 
prevention because we don't want the money to have been stolen. Then we now start spending more money to chase and try and find the money. And usually we don't get all of it back. Mm -hmm. How many issues have been prevented by the actions that OSP have taken? We think that there's been a lot of prevention, just by the fact that OSP is there, OSP is checking, OSP is following up. A certain level of awareness and fear has been put into the space, which was not there. Right. It was intentionally crafted to create that kind of environment where people take anti-corruption issues quite more seriously. Mm -hmm. And so in my view, if you took to October or so 2023, before they had the opportunity to try engaging 200 staff across Ghana to start working, and you look at the amount of work they have done, look at the cases they've picked. They've not been afraid to pick the cases which involve politically exposed persons mm -hmm. and for which even the president has cleared people and yet they stood and said, we are going to investigate. Right. I think that that entity needs a lot more support. Lot in more. my view, um, considering that it took up to, so it's only about six months or so of permanent staff, mm -hmm. I think that ideally we should be giving them more time to ground themselves, to get the new staff oriented and to see how much more they will do over the next two years before you can draw a conclusion. But to have a, only about 15 staff for five years and yet be the single most important anti-corruption entity at the moment, I don't think that we are being fair to them if we say they have not performed. And in 30 seconds, your, 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 your brief on government commitment in this particular area, government. in spite of all the clouds of you know, uh, persecution and suspicion that hangs around anti-corruption agencies. Unfortunately, government hasn't demonstrated sufficient political will relating to anti-corruption and consistently appears to be, you know, um, allowing people who we think just allow the system to investigate and draw conclusions and yet when the president speaks it's almost as if uh, he has cleared them and therefore the agency should then say we will not investigate. Mm. Uh, we think that in an election year uh, the fortunes of the ruling party as well as other parties who are on the electoral platforms will be very much shaped by what they say mm -hmm. and how much they can convince citizens about what they will do differently. We've had many promises in the past People came into government, they have not <laughs> demonstrated goodwill to the people of this country. Mm. We are praying that this time when people speak, there will be truly men and women of integrity who can move this nation forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Adam Senanu. He's, a, he's an anti-corruption campaigner, member of the coalition. And this morning, they had a news conference to respond to uh, issues of corruption, Senate, OSP, and other matters. I appreciate your time this afternoon very much. This is The Pulse with me, Elton Robin.